Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and for today's Linux OS review, we are looking at Solus version 1.1. Now, if you're not familiar with Solus, it was designed from scratch, so it's not based on Ubuntu or Arch or anything like that. No, it was designed from scratch, so I got to start out by giving the developing team two thumbs up for, for, for taking that challenge right there. Uh, the Solus project's whole focus was to create a Linux OS that is focused on the desktop. So, you know, no Solus servers or anything like that. It is focused solely on the desktop. And they're, they're, they're taking this from the point of view of, okay, we're going to do one thing, the, the desktop system, and we're going to do it very, very well. And, and I think uh, I think they're, they're really on the right track with that. And... You know, I've been playing around with this for about a week. I've been running it as as the uh, as my distro on my laptop, and then just recently installed it on my desktop also, so I could do this review. Uh, really, really like what they're doing here. As I said, this is at version 1.1. I missed out on getting in a review on version 1.0. I looked at it back during the beta stages, though. Um, I was just really busy at the time of the uh, at the time of uh, 1.1's release or 1.0's release. So anyway, here's from their uh, web page from the blog. I will leave a link down below if you want to take a look at this on your own and read it all the way through. And just talks a little bit about this release, uh, some of the changes they made. They Budgie, which is the desktop environment, they've made some updated dates, fixed some bugs, that sort of thing. They've also gone with Light DM for their display manager. Used to use a, a GNOME display manager. They went to Light DM, and as they say right here, they're seeing significant performance improvements, uh, reduced CPU overhead. So uh, uh, that's all good. And then it talks a little bit about some of these updated uh, core and graphic packages. Mesa has been updated to 11.1.2. Uh, Xorg is up to 1.17.4. Um, and kind of scrolling through the rest of it. Uh, all of the applications that have been updated. And new Firefox, new, new uh, Nautilus Files, Rhythmbox, Thunderbird, VLC. All that kind of stuff has been updated to more, more recent or, or the most recent, however you want to say it, uh, packages. So let's take a tour of our desktop layout. Really simple, single panel across the top. We have over on our left hand side, we have our menu, which you can either mouse click it to open it or you can use the Windows slash super key and open it. It is searchable so you know you can search for let's say uh, uh, Nautilus files, start typing in files and boom it starts pulling stuff up. So I very much like having a, uh, a keyboard search included in the menus. And then we've got a quick launcher for our little software center and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And then we've got icon only for all of our uh, running windows and then over on the right hand side of our of our panel we've got our little tray icons and if you go and you click um, right where the power button is it opens what is called Raven which is I think is a really cool setup um, you've got your calendar here you've got volume control You've got uh, input and output for your microphones, speakers, all that kind of stuff. So you can play around with your calendar. You know, it gives you quick access to the calendar. You can shift, uh, you know, move months around, that sort of thing. If you want to collapse some of this, you can just just by going that route. Um, also, if you are currently running, say, Rhythmbox, um, controls for Rhythmbox will show up right right down in here, so you can control you know control all that right from from this panel as well and then also you see right now it's select set up as applets if you click on notification it'll list all of your notifications from here you can also go and play around with your budgie settings your general settings your panel settings so if you don't like this panel layout want to make some changes you can go and do that um, 
you can you can add some other applets to it move it around you know maybe you wanted the date and center boom you can do that you can also move the panel from the top to the bottom however you want to do that resize it if need be play around with the shadows all kinds of good stuff with it and then if you come a little farther down say you uh, you want to make some changes to the budgie menu go into the preferences for the menu go and click the little gear icon and from here you can go and make the changes so as you can see right here the menu is the standard menu right now but if you wanted to go and let me go and open that back up again if you wanted to go to what they call the compact mode you can do that click on compact mode and now it just gives you like a single a single row uh, I guess you could say or a single column and, and lists everything that way personally I think I will put it back to the uh, to the other to, to the standard setup I like having the categories at least when I'm doing these reviews there we go so anyway um, from here any of the any of these applets that have um, settings and whatnot you can go and use the, the little gear icon to go and change from here and then also while you're in the in the Raven panel you can also you know lock your panel you can uh, um, hit the power button and then the little gear icon here will open up your main settings menu so and and for those of you that have run Ubuntu or you know any of the GNOME distros you you recognize the way this is kind of laid out and most of this is going to be familiar to you I opened up the file managers just so you could see the uh, the icon theme here really like the look of it um, and then also you can see the small icons up here at the top really nice uh, nice icon theme and uh, I've got the tweak tool open here so it's called um, uh, Fabo Mono is the uh, is the icon theme and then there's also a Fabo Mono dark and then there's just Faba and then they also have the the high contrast uh, available and the mocha we'll just go back to that fabo mono and then as far as uh, theming this is the arc darker theme um, there is also arc and then uh, we've got the arc dark which is kind of a, a global dark theme if you're if you're into the really dark theming but I think I will go back to arc darker I think I like that best of all so let's take a look at the software that's included by default now I haven't added much myself I added uh, what I do I added simple screen recorder I added cheese um, the uh, the HP de uh, device manager so that I could add uh, add my uh, HP printer which by the way it's wireless printer I downloaded that file and then went to add printer boom found my wireless printer and we were off and running with the printer so anyway, I added that and then uh, oh I added Dropbox as well so that I could access some files um, other than that everything that you're going to see here is uh, you know what you get by default let's go through it by category here we'll start with the accessories we got our Nautilus file manager our calculator gedit for our text editing there's my HP device manager Under internet we've got Firefox uh, of course I already talked about Dropbox hex chat Thunderbird for our email and then transmission for our uh, BitTorrent under office we've got the GNOME calendar uh, sound and video we got rhythm box for music and of course I already talked about simple screen recorder and cheese VLC for our media player and then uh, sun dry out just lists our print settings and iBus preferences under system settings we've got our display background basically all the stuff that popped up when uh, when I pulled up system settings all that stuff's going to be listed right in here so really no reason to go through that whole list there 
uh, system tools, hardware driver, so you can go and see if there is a proprietary driver available for your particular video card or whatever, that sort of thing. Uh, link for the software center, deconf editor, gparted, and then uh, all of our system settings there. And under utilities is our terminal, the tweak tool, uh, archive manager, disk use anal anal analyzer, analyzer. <laughs> Just can't talk today. Wow. Uh, our document viewer, image viewer, uh, password and key rings, script the screenshot tool, and system monitor. Which, by the way, let me open up system monitor and just so you can see what uh, what we've got going on here. Um, look under resources and uh, okay. So total memory that I'm using right now is 1.5 gigs. That is with cheese running with simple screen recorder and I got Firefox running over here with about five tabs open uh, and then also you know we've got the uh, the system monitor open right here so um, I don't know I guess you could consider it a middleweight as far as uh, RAM and CPU usage um, you see my CPU output up here uh, and this is an, an eight core processor so that's why you see you know all of the uh, all of the uh, CPUs listed there, but you know, uh, um, memory-wise, not too bad. Software Center, really nice piece of software there. Let me go and click on it here, and we'll open it up. Uh, real simple and easy to use. You got a software category, you got a update category under software. It's categorized, so you can you know come through here, pick what it is that you're looking for. Um, you know that's desktop components maybe oh let's let's go over here to office software let's um, you know no office suite or writing software is included by default so let's find let's see if we can find uh, LibreOffice and there it is so you see all the different LibreOffice so let's just we'll go in and we'll add LibreOffice writer Oop. Was that right here? Which one did I add? There's Calc. LibreOffice Writer right there. There we go. I don't need the math help. So anyway, oh, there's the LibreOffice Writer help though, so we'll go and we'll add that. So if we wanted to go and add those, you would just click Apply. It'll list everything that it's going to add here click install put in our password enter and boom it uh, it goes to work and I just kinda watching it 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 downloads fairly fast and it also does the installation fairly fast and while I'm talking about speed um, booting speed is relatively quick quick click once again I cannot talk today uh, booting speed is relatively quick as well if you go over to the update side of things you click on updates you can do a check for updates I just updated right before I did the video so there's no reason to check here but you would you know click check if there's updates available it'll list them here you can go and apply it boom and that's all she wrote now the list of software that is included in the uh, official repository is not all that extensive right now and to be quite honest that is to be expected just from the standpoint this is a from scratch distribution it takes a while to compile those packages and uh, um, you know like I said it's a it's a new distribution so there are instructions on the wiki page and that's what I've got open here. I will leave a link down below so that you can find your way to the Solus Project Wiki. And we'll come down here to talk a little bit about package creation. And then also it has instructions for, for a variety of different things here. Uh, if you want to add Google Chrome, this is something that I would be interested in just because I'm a very big Chrome junkie. Um, it's got instructions for installing Chrome Stable, Chrome Beta, and the, the development branch. Um, also, if you want GNOME Shell instead of uh, Budgie, um, 
I don't know why you would, just because uh, to me, at, Budgie is at least uh, a, a big part of the draw of the Solus project. But if you did want to do that, um, you got instructions right there. And then also Java, Solus installer, uh, and then also this third party application list right here, which it lists Chrome again, but also Opera, Vivaldi. Um, they don't have Plex Media listed there yet, but Spotify, uh, Google Talk browser plugin. So all kinds of stuff there. Like I said, I'll leave a link down below if you want to go and uh, and uh, try adding some of these these uh, third-party softwares. Performance has been great. Uh, mostly, I've been testing this on my laptop, and you know, I've been running LibreOffice and and. Uh, uh, running Firefox, the added Chrome, was running Chrome, you know, just all kinds of applications. Did not once have a have a time where an application crashed or anything like that. Uh, Budgie, the desktop, it has worked fine for me. So, you know, the, there were no issues with glitches and bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, granted, uh, I didn't try every single application that is in the repository or anything like that, but just, you know, a week's worth of day-to-day -day use on the laptop, no issues, no, nothing at all. So, uh, uh, really happy with that. Um, no hardware problems where, you know, couldn't find drivers or such, didn't, wasn't compatible with, with certain pieces of hardware. Just, you know, like I said, everything worked right out of the box. So, really really happy with the performance um, I mentioned earlier boot times are pretty quick it boots up nice and fast um, application startup I, I did notice that sometimes some of the applications would lag just a bit um, uh, they were fine once they opened up and and were up and running, but sometimes it just seemed like you know I would select I don't know LibreOffice and you would sit there and wait you know maybe five seconds or so before it actually booted up and and started uh, started running LibreOffice, um, but it was kind of random. Didn't happen very often, and it wasn't a major problem, but it was enough. It, the the pause was long enough that you thought okay. Is something not working and then all of a sudden it you know the the LibreOffice window would pop open and boom we're up and running um, but that was really the only thing that I noticed and uh, like I said considering that this is a made-from-scratch distro um, you know that's really to be commended that there there are just so few bugs and issues here well that about finishes up my review of Solus 1.1 really really like this uh, this distribution plan on keeping it on my laptop at the very least and uh, you know who knows this may end up becoming the main uh, desktop operating system as well um, but at least for right now it's staying on the laptop and uh, you know who knows maybe a, a month or so down the road I'll give you kind of an update or whatnot um, but having said all that as always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.